When you think about the building blocks of life on our planet, there's definitely a pecking order. Water is at the top. Beside it making up most of the Earth, it also gets its own fancy bottles. Dirt is always being overshadowed by water. Boy, dirt must have a horrible marketing team. But when you think of our food, dirt is almost as important as water. The machines that work this land, they put seeds into dirt so that food comes out. So stop talking dirt about dirt. For eons, man toiled in the soil to grow a myriad of crops using basic tools and maybe a few horses or oxen. So-called farm equipment, AKA the plow, remained pretty much the same up until the start of the Civil War in 1861. Senior manager of programs at Greenfield Village, Jim Johnson, showed me a few of the innovative leaps in farm equipment on display at the Henry Ford. We started outdoors with the breakthrough Oliver Chilled Plow. Part leading up to maybe the Civil War era, plows were mostly 99% made of wood and the only metal parts were often handmade, hand wrought. James Oliver, who designed this plow, his big innovation was this whole concept of chilled iron and it really made it a little bit more pliable, less brittle, but very durable and very non-stick. This is the plow that went west. This is the plow that broke open the Great Plains. After a few quick tips on how to work the Oliver plow, Jim got the horse team of Abe and Lincoln ready. Easy. Come on. Okay. Easy. Easy. Ooh. Ooh. I threw my whole body into it, tilling the earth. What an amazing feeling. Oh, what a lot of work. The next innovation in farm machinery occurred in 1892, when a man named John Froelich invented the tractor. Henry Ford experimented building tractors by using automobile parts, then began mass producing one of his own tractors in 1917. Over here, we have serial number one. This is the first one produced for, for market, for sale. It's Henry Ford's Fordson. The tractor was called the Fordson for a very good reason. Henry built the implements with his son, Edsel. Was Ford successful in agriculture? He was. This was actually referred to as the Model T of the field. So you know how popular that car was. Well, you could hook a plow to it. You could hook up the harrow, which is the next step in smoothing out the field. You could hook a planter to it if you wanted to. These were $750, very lightweight, very flexible. You could do more things than just pull. You know, you could hook belts to it, all sorts of things. How do you think farm horses felt about this? They eventually, you know, were, were out of a job. Other marvels of farming innovation at the Henry Ford include this behemoth of a machine, a 1950 Rust cotton picker. John Rust, as a youngster, grew up on a cotton farm in Texas. And while picking cotton as a kid, he would daydream about better ways to do this. You know, is it because picking cotton was not a lot of fun? It was awful work. Rust designed a series of rotating spindles to separate the cotton from the plant as the machine moved down the field. And that cage is just filled with cottony it goodness? Would be, it would be filled all the way to the top with fluffy white cotton. Modern farm implements like this New Holland Combine can cut and separate corn from the stock and clean it all at once, while the farmer rides in an air-conditioned cab. Much easier than harvesting and shucking the corn by hand. And it's comfortable, too. It's great. Wait, is it stick shift or automatic? Automatic. Oh. Thank goodness, okay. All right, get out of the way. 